The Philadelphia Eagles make a free agent signing that may be bigger than what we believe. All that and more coming up next. The following announcement has been paid for by the ENN Podcast. He has a, he has a good energy. Yeah. Can you believe it? Can you feel it? Can you feel that excitement? Wearing the merchandise, wearing the hats. Chris Wild here live from Lincoln Finance. And I'm telling you, if you let Eli Manning walk into that stadium. Music. Wow. Damn. Again, and I hate to do this again, but these are goose. Whoa! And more. What's his next book going to be called? Spineless? Like. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the ENN Podcast. I'm the good brother of Broad Street, the 2020 Big League Fantasy Football Champion and professional wrestler Chris Wild. You know, watching the Eagles, there's always guys that we seem to play against that, are, that always kill us. Uh, and Ryan Kerrigan was one of those guys, just a guy that it seemed like no matter when he played us, no matter how good we are, he always got around to getting to our quarterback, was always in our backfield, and there was just something that I respected about him. I wanted to hate him, but I couldn't not respect him. Now, whether it was throwing up the Shawn Michaels pose after every sack or stop, or just showing that leadership on a team, which, let's be honest, the Washington football team has not been good the past 10 years, but Ryan Kerrigan stood out as a leader on that team, and like I said, he was so good, it was hard not to respect him. I am absolutely excited and relieved that we don't have to go up against him two times a year anymore as he announced on his Instagram today that he has signed with the Philadelphia Eagles just minutes after thanking the Washington football team for the last 10 years of his career. Now, I'm not going to sit here and um, completely blow smoke. Look, the guy is not who he was four years ago. However, he's going to come into this defense as most likely a stand-up pass rusher, a rotational defensive end. He's not going to have to play every snap at 32. He's got 95 sacks uh, to his career. He's put over 13 sacks on every team in the NFC East, so he hasn't just completely demolished us. As a matter of fact, right tackle Lane Johnson already tweeted his pleasure with the signing, as he once said that Ryan Kerrigan was one of the hardest guys he had to block. Um, he was an absolute terror against, like I said, every team in the NFC East, and the Eagles especially, and I'm very happy to see him on this team. Now, it is a surprising move because I figured that the next defensive move the Eagles were going to make was going to be at cornerback, how we really, after Darius Slay, there's not much there. We've already beaten that um, up as much as we can, so hopefully there's still more coming, but you cannot not be excited about this defensive line, and I fell into this trap before. I think I fell into it last year with uh, the signing of Hargrave and thinking him, Malik Jackson, were going to be some amazing tandem with Fletcher Cox, but however, looking at it this year, it seems a lot more solid. You're going to have Derek Barnett and Josh Sweat uh, probably trading out reps with Kerrigan. Then you're going to have, of course, Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave. Um, they've also, through the draft, help their defensive line. Milton Williams comes into this thing. Uh, Teron Jackson, uh, another guy. And then Marlon, and I'm going to mess this, I'm going to mess this name up. I was not looking forward to this on this episode, but I'm going to try it. Marlon Tui Plutu from USC is also a defensive tackle on this team. So there's depth there. I think that this defensive line um, is going to be solid. Now, last year I put out the prediction that it was going to be one of the best in the NFL. I'm not going there yet. However, signing a guy like Ryan Kerrigan does not only make the defensive line better, but the entire defense, which is why I send the open. I believe this is a bigger move than we what we believe I think bringing a Ryan Kerrigan into this uh, defense brings a leader it brings that Malcolm Jenkins type leadership um, that the Eagles were lacking last year I think it also again he's a culture setter he sets a different culture putting him up there with Fletcher Cox who apparently those two have a relationship um, from the Pro Bowl a couple years back and just having him again set the tone on this defense and show some leadership teaching some of these young guys I think it's a bigger move than what we think of I think of Chris Long in 2017 a veteran uh, pass rusher that the Eagles brought in here that again just kind of changed that culture 
a little bit. Um, so with that being said, guys, yeah, I'm as you can tell, I'm very, very excited about Ryan Kerrigan coming to this team and us not having to watch him tear apart our quarterbacks any longer. Now, last year he had five sacks, not a lot. However, he only played 38% of the snaps because you got a guy like Chase Young who might be the best defensive player in the league and uh, Montez Sweat, who is no slouch either, coming into that really, really good Washington football team defense. So uh, I'm thankful that uh, those 38% of his snaps turned him into a Philadelphia Eagle this year. With that being said, guys, tons of content coming, some on Jalen Hurts later today, um, as well as we're going to be looking at Devontae Smith this week as he participated in his first Eagles rookie camp. And how is Nick Sirianni dealing with all this? We'll talk about all that and more coming up in a few days. Thanks for watching. If, if as always, you're a new viewer, you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button as we are getting very, very close to 2,000 subscribers. We're also getting very close to 500 videos here on Eagles News Now. As always, guys, stay safe, stay healthy. Go Birds, and I'll see you. Eagle Nation, the 